Hello, this is the Kaiweet KTIK01 thermal imaging camera and it's got a three and a half inch touch display so that you can do things like this. Pinch to zoom in and zoom out. In the box we have a user manual, a semi-rigid case, uh, lanyards for both the camera and the case and in here there's a power supply and a A to C cable. Now the power supply is 5 volts 2 amps with a type A connector. Now if you connect it with type A it pulls uh, just under 5 volts at nearly 2 amps. Connect it with a type C cable to power delivery and it actually requests 12 volts, but it pulls about the same amount of power. This is 12 volts at 0.7 amps. Now, if you press the power button on the camera, you've got a nice indicator for state of charge, even when the camera's turned off. Let's switch the camera on, press and hold the power button. Now, it does take quite a while to power up, uh, which is common to most thermal imaging cameras. Although this camera does have a standby mode which I'll show you in a moment. On the screen we have a hot indicator, a center screen indicator whose data value is up here, a cold indicator which is darting about but it's currently there. Um, also the palette, uh, the lowest temperature and the highest temperature and the mode that the palette is in. That's currently in automatic but you also have semi-automatic and manual. Um, date and time up here, emissivity value 0.95 and here is the battery state of charge indicator. There's also a Wi-Fi indicator there and these three dots at the bottom mean that if you touch the screen up pops a menu with all sorts of settings. Incidentally if you double tap the screen and I'll move the camera when I do this you can see that it briefly freezes so that does a manually invoked uh, sensor calibration. I mentioned the standby mode. If you briefly press the power switch, it dims the display, but the sensor is still on. And from what I can tell, the front of the camera remains warm. So I believe the sensor is still uh, drawing a fair amount of power. Briefly press the power switch and it takes literally about one second to become ready for thermal imaging. Uh, so, as I said, this is automatic palette mode. If we go into semi-automatic, you can set the delta. So this has a delta, that's the difference between the bottom temperature and the top temperature, uh, currently 30 degrees. If I set that to 1 degree, you can see uh, the change in the palette. So that's semi-automatic mode. There is also a manual mode, and this locks both the bottom temperature and the top temperature, and now they're manually alterable by spinning through these adjustment dials. They're adjusted in tenth of a degree increments, which does seem very fine. I can also adjust. I can also adjust the uh, low temperature with a similar spinning adjuster wheel thing. Now, if you tap the screen once, uh, these three dots imply that there's a menu there. That brings up the menu. Now, I'm just gonna go into settings and go into image tag, and I'm gonna turn off the minimum temperature because I don't really need it. I'm only interested in what's hot, not what's cold. And if we come out of that, then you can see I've got the hot marker and the center marker, but the low temperature marker has disappeared. Okay, let's go into settings again, and I'm going to adjust the temperature range. It's currently set to auto, but you've also got the option of minus 20 to plus 150 degrees C, or 100 degrees C to 550 degrees C. I'll leave it in auto just for the moment. So now if I move from the power supply, which has temperatures up to 50 degrees, to the light bulb that that's powering, uh, you can see that the temperature of that is 290 degrees. And you can see that the temperature uh, on the pallet, the pallet has automatically uh, uh, moved to that higher temperature setting of up to 550 degrees. Now I've set on this F2 button, these are uh, settable function buttons, change of the temperature range. So that's now locked the uh, pallet to 150 degrees at the top and it's saying that there's a temperature greater than 153. If I now move to the high temperature setting and move back to the power supply, 
it's going to say that all the temperatures here are less than 100 and so we're actually using the wrong temperature range. Press it once again and we can go back to auto temperature range. Going through these menu items then, the first one is the image gallery and that will show you images which are locally stored on the camera but also images that you've copied up to the cloud service. Now I've set up an account on the cloud service and the camera is currently connected to Wi-Fi so that it can see my cloud images. I've got two images there and it can see my local images. There are four images here. So let's take an image using the shutter release button of these two heat sinks like so. Just click that. It shows that that's gone to the gallery. Now let's go to the gallery and I can select that image, I go to select and I can uh, select it there and I can actually now upload it to the cloud service and that will upload that image to the cloud service via Wi-Fi. So now that image complete will appear in the cloud gallery as a third image. Uh, next along this menu bar are the image modes. You've got uh, infrared, you've also got visible light, keep hitting the wrong thing, visible light, uh, picture in picture which has some interesting features. So you can for example pinch to expand the picture in picture area. In fact you can expand it to the whole uh, screen and then you've got a slider which uh, varies the mix. So you can have 100% uh, thermal or 100% optical or a mix of the two and this is where you can probably see uh, the parallax errors because I'm so close to the power supply. I've also got multi-spectral image fusion which sounds very grand but what it means is that you're mixing the thermal with the optical but it does something interesting with the optical. It does edge detection and enhancement so you can see all the enhanced edges and this is where you really can see that there is uh, some substantial parallax being this close because there's that heat sink and there's the optical edge enhanced image of it and they're shifted by quite a bit but at a distance this is extremely useful for seeing what you're looking at for example in the thermal image you can't see the numbers on this display at all but in the optical image they show up quite clearly. Okay the next menu item is this the analysis object. Now there is a point object but it's not as interesting as the rectangle. So I'll bring up a rectangle. There it is. You can adjust its size with these handles and if I press F1 which I've assigned to the laser range finder it does something interesting. It gives you a distance to object measurement of 0.1 meters and that adds to the data briefly um, a meter squared which this object represents. So uh, at this very close quarters of 10 centimeters it's only 0.1 meters squared. But yes the laser briefly comes on, it does a laser range find, uh, shows you the distance and also shows you meter squared. But this rectangular object itself has local low temperature indicator, a local high temperature indicator if I come away from that. You'll see the high temperature indicator there um, and local average temperature of uh, that minimum and maximum and this object is called R1 for rectangle number one. I believe you can add more rectangles. Let's try it. Yes there's a second rectangle. I'll uh, change the parameters of that one. I'll move the first one. Yes yeah, so you can have multiple rectangular <laughs> objects each with its own oh you can select them individually and then you get local uh, minima and maxima indicators it gets quite complicated um, if you bring that up again there is a dustbin and you can clear all of those uh, analysis objects the next menu item is palettes and you have uh, four color palettes here plus two black and white you have white hot which is the pure thermal imaging data you have an iron a, a hot iron, a, a rainbow palette and an arctic palette. I do prefer the palettes where white is the highest temperature and black is the lowest temperature. So a palette like hot iron for example it's got red at the top and is that blue or black at the bottom? I can't tell but I think I'll put it back to iron red. 
The next menu item is the LED, options for the LED. You can turn the LED on permanently, you won't see anything in that mode, but if I go to uh, visible light, then when I turn the LED on, you can see how that changes. You can't see it very well, but because I've got overhead lights. Um, you can also turn on and off the flash, which uses that LED. It's on the front of the camera, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, so that when you take a photograph, the LED will briefly come on. Yeah, you can see the LED is here. I'll just switch that off and uh, we'll have a look at the front panel of the camera. So that's the LED, the white LED. Uh, this double window here is the laser range finder. Uh, I believe this is the laser output here. This is the optical camera and this is the thermal camera. And you can see that they're separated by a small distance, which is probably necessary because I believe the thermal camera has to be heated. Um, so of course, yes, close up, you will get some parallax errors. And the final menu item is settings. And you've got a whole load of stuff in here for uh, saving of images. The resolution of the visible light camera, which you can set to five megapixels, but I don't really see the point. I suppose it is a high resolution camera that's installed in here. Um, laser range finding you can turn off. That just prevents you accidentally shining the laser at someone. Uh, brightness of the display. The temperature range, which we've looked at, which has those three settings. Emissivity, which you can set. Atmospheric temperature reflect temperature, relative humidity and target distance, which all have an impact on the precision or the accuracy of the uh, temperature measurement. So those can all be set up. Flags and alarms. Uh, image tag is where you can switch on and off uh, the various indicators. I've turned off the minimum temperature indicator because there were just too many indicators. Um, the auxiliary buttons F1 and F2 and what they actually do and I've set F1 to do that um, laser pointer and laser rangefinder thing and I've set F2 to be my selection of temperature range. You've got connection settings for Wi-Fi. You can get the camera to connect to your Wi-Fi or you can have the camera um, act as a hotspot and then when you run the analysis software on a PC you can actually uh, connect to the camera and pull the data off the camera using the camera as an access point. And you've got um, settings, that's the hotspot settings, and you've got settings for the cloud service. Uh, then you've got all the settings, date and time. Now that has an auto mode um, because uh, it's got Wi-Fi, so you don't need to actually set those settings. Temperature units, distance units, language, auto sleep timing and shutdown timing. So sleep is where the display goes off, but the camera element stays on. Shut down, the camera completely switches off. It just, the difference between those is really how long it takes to come back on. Storage management, version information, and restore factory settings. So I just wanted to see what difference the um, target distance setting makes. That's 54.1. So if we go into settings, and change the target distance to the minimum, which is uh, 0.3 meters. I think that should save itself. Yeah, 0.3 meters. That actually gives us a different reading, 52.9. That was 54 before, wasn't it? So yes, it does make a small difference to the accuracy of the temperature measurements to get those settings right. Now it seems that quite a few of the uh, settings on here are designed for things like building uh, thermal imaging. So for example, if you go to the um, object analysis, analysis object, and you set up a rectangle and you do the laser measurement and you get the uh, area of this rectangle, not really so useful for close up work like electronics work, but it could be useful for heat loss calculations to know the area of the target that you're looking at. For close-up electronics work, you do have the problem that in the mixed image modes, you do get this parallax uh, error. You can see the heat sink there is offset from the optical uh, version of the heat sink. The thermal imaging sensor is a high resolution sensor. It's 256 by 192 but of course because we're so close 
Um, we're not actually perfectly in focus here because the focus of the thermal imaging sensor will be set uh, for much further away. And with any thermal imaging, you've just got to watch for uh, certain things like the tops of these capacitors look quite cool, but actually that's a reflection rather than an emission. And if I move the light bulb, uh, so that it reflects into the tops of those capacitors. Yes, you can see that they are reflecting uh, the window actually in my office. Uh, and if I move the light bulb onto the top of them, you can see the little uh, the little four quadrant vents uh, on the tops of those. So you do have to use the usual um, analysis of things that may look cool, but they're actually reflecting rather than emitting. So that was a quick look at the Kaiwitz KTI K01 uh, thermal imaging camera. It's a very different form factor to the typical gun style thermal imaging cameras. This is more like a sort of uh, Instamatic film camera, I suppose. Large three and a half inch display, 256 by 192 thermal imager resolution, 25 Hertz update rate. So it's nice and fast. Large capacity battery. This one is 2100 milliamp hours. And you've also got this uh, standby mode where you can switch it off and then bring it back into use within about one second, which is very handy. Uh, you've also got this laser range finder, which if I click that, you can see that my power supply is 0.1 meters away. Did you see the little red laser dot? Um, there it is shining on that white resistor there. Uh, the memory inside this camera will store in excess of 50,000 uh, images and the cloud service and the Wi-Fi options make it very easy to transfer your images to the Windows software, which you can download for free and install on your PC. So an extremely brief look at the PC analysis software. Here's a file. Let's zoom in. We've got lots of options for additional color palettes including the rather nice green hot. Uh, you can vary the minimum and maximum uh, markers here, or I can just simply set them to auto. I can put an analysis object on the screen and we get a histogram. I can't really go through all this. There really isn't time in this video, but it's a very powerful package. I will, of course, put links to this camera in the description uh, below this video. And thanks very much to Kai Wheats for uh, sending this uh, KTI K01 thermal imaging camera to me. Um, but that's it for this video. So cheerio.